Hello, my name is Tom McIntyre. I am with the Easter Bunny at this year's Fringe Festival. Please watch this video. Why I fell in love with theater. Um, years ago, I saw a play called Trafford Pansy and uh, it was such an engaging experience. I loved it. Um, at that time, I didn't really have a, a vision of myself uh, in theater, participating in theater, but it definitely um, stoked a bit of a fire. Um, in my history, my creative history is kind of like, you know, don't like to say this, but it's, there's always been an element of failure of different things I've tried. Like I've, uh, I've been in uh, bands before as a songwriter, singer songwriter, and it never really came together um, and different elements, um, other things, actually a little bit of film work that never really quite came together. Um, and then I graduated from, I was taking uh, university courses as an uh, adult, and I finally got my BA in uh, English uh, in drama. And after that, I was looking for things to do, and I just, uh, someone introduced me to a playwriting course at a local college. And I took that, and that was it. You know, I just realized I'm just having such a good time here with these people. And uh, I got into theater then. I entered a fringe festival uh, lottery. Um, that's the way we do it here in Canada, um, and won, and won a spot. And, uh, you know, once you get that ball rolling, all of a sudden you got to have a play. So that was in 2015, and I, I did, and it was pretty successful. And it, it, uh, it introduced me to a lot of people who uh, make theater their life. And, um, you know, that was very attractive. They were great people to be around. And uh, now it's uh, 2021, and, you know, things are just growing from there. When did playwriting become a passion instead of just an interest? I think that started when um, not long into my first uh, real play that I had produced, I started to get an, um, I started to see what it meant to other people, uh, the people who make it their living, you know, instead I was just, um, um, just beginning. And then I, you come in contact with people who, you know, they make their living doing this. And you start to see the, your responsibility as a playwright, and not only in your content, but in um, but just in your role in in uh, in their lives, you know, and uh, how you what you're going to do is going to uh, affect other people. So I think it would be what changed why it became more of a passion would be um, would be just that how um, becoming a playwright you're going to involve different people. You know, and that's, there's a responsibility there. Why is the theater experience so unique as opposed to other um, art forms that we may uh, experience collectively? Well, one, for one thing, this is the most obvious, it's the immediacy. Um, as opposed to film, I look at film, when I look here, uh, you know, a movie star or a director talk about what they do, it's always about what they did, what they've done. It's nothing that's, there's nothing immediate happening. It's something in the past. Whereas when you experience a play, I mean, you're right there. You're right there. You know, you can actually have eye contact um, with the people performing. And um, you actually feel more of a responsibility as audience. You know, you see how your reaction uh, can influence a production. I've seen it, you know, when, a, when, a, when you've got a responsive audience, all of a sudden the work is better. Um, whereas a, a play, a film, I love it. You know, we all love movies. Um, but a place, a film is kind of dead. You know, it's done. It's in the, it's in the can, I guess, as they say. And there's nothing going to change that. Uh, whereas uh, theater, I'm sure everybody will tell you, anybody you interview, will say every night is different. It doesn't matter how many times you rehearse. Um, this show is not going to be like the next one. Um, and some, you know, I guess one of the keys, one of the things that we try to uh, master, although it's impossible, is, you know, trying to overcome that, trying to, you know, um, just gain control of the, of the performance, but it can't be done, you know, and that's what makes it magic. What is the process from getting, from getting an idea to bringing that idea to the stage? Um, it's an evolution. Um, there will be things that um, trigger an idea and, um, you know, you'll think it's something that, that should be, that you can work on that will be, first of all, entertaining. I mean, there are things that um, you see that are, you know, issue driven that you want to write about, but um, there's also that element, will it be entertaining? 
So uh, I try to approach um, an idea from uh, those perspectives. Um, is it something that I consider important? And is it something that I can make um, an audience want to come and see? Um, so that process is difficult and uh, there's, no, um, there's no template for it, but um, it's just, uh, you know, it just evolves. And actually it never stops evolving. Why I wanted to be a part of this year's Hollywood Fringe um, is because I was actually a part of last year's Hollywood Fringe and we know what happened there, so we won't go talk about that. But I am one of those people who um, actually may have benefited from um, the situation we're in. Um, my play would have been the third fringe I'd have been in last year if it would have been produced at the Hollywood Fringe. And uh, in hindsight, it would have been like they had problems with the, the Toronto production and then the Hamilton production. But then I was ready to stage it again in, in Hollywood. And what this year delay gave me an opportunity to do, to do was to revisit my, um, the play and actually realize I had to, just what we were talking about, I had to share. Um, I finally got a director. I used to just workshop it. And um, like they say, you know, um, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Um, that could have been what happened again if last year's festival would have went off. But this year, I, like I said, I revisited it and um, I got a, a professional director, a guy who really fell in love with the project as much as I did. And uh, he's been able to mine material from the play that's um, taken it totally to a different level. And um, Fringe in general, if we can touch on that, um, I think it's the greatest um, platform that a young, uh, or if not young, emerging uh, playwright can have. Um, and where else can you get um, this uh, kind of exposure, the opportunity to play in legitimate theaters um, in whichever city you're, you happen to be in um, and whichever fringe you happen to enter. I just think it's the most fantastic. I don't know any other uh, entertainment art, artistic vehicle that uh, offers such a, a platform. Why I ended up um, going through uh, Theater Asylum was just uh, um, up for me, a, a stroke of great luck. I mean, when you first um, enter, you know, the Hollywood Fringe Festival process and select your theater, I was just, um, I was just going blind. I just didn't know exactly what kind of, uh, what venue I wanted to use. And um, I looked at the, uh, the, the, you know, the so what I saw was my potential audience numbers. And I thought um, Matthew Quinn's um, Asylum Theater looked like they had the type of black box uh, spaces that would uh, be appropriate for my show. You know, like 35, 40 seaters. And uh, it turned out to be such a good thing getting connected with Matthew, because I, I think you know Matthew. Um, he's one of these guys who's in it just for all the right reasons. And in anything, any endeavor, you when you... Uh, you're so fortunate to get connected with someone like that. And I've uh, felt ever since uh, I got connected with his theater, with combined uh, art form, I felt, you know, he's always on your side. And um, being a part of uh, his uh, facility and his uh, whole enterprise, it's been so supportive, you know. So, uh, like I say, how I got in, how I got tied up with uh, Asylum Theater was uh, lucky, but it was... Uh, I'm very thankful for that stroke of good luck. Why did I come up with the idea for Easter Bunny and why did I have to write it? Um, that's an easy one. It was um, evening about in 2015, my girlfriend and I were watching an episode of Forensic Files. Actually, we were uh, binge watching episodes of Forensic Files. And it was the, one of these evenings where they were playing their top 10 episodes from that their fans vote on as the most disturbing. Uh, just a little uh, info in case people don't know. It's one of these um, procedural kind of uh, uh, crime shows that detail real crimes and how they're solved. And uh, on this particular evening, they had played six or seven in a row that had the most, uh, you know, they didn't lie. They, they were disturbing individuals in the crimes they commit. And uh, there was one point where my girlfriend actually started to shake. And uh, being a man sitting next to her, there was almost a, a funny sense of guilt that came over me. 
um, because everyone they detailed was, uh, was a man. And I said to her, wow, it's just as good. To, you know, when you have those moments when you need to say something, even though it might not make any sense, I said to her, wow, it's like 90% of these psychopaths are men. And she, uh, almost in anger, said, try 99. And it uh, resonated with me. And uh, that, and uh, she was open to me, and she detailed, like a lot of women, you know, they all have, uh, most women have a story to tell. Um, that, uh, you know, that they might, you know, that you might, even being intimate partners with a woman, you might never hear. And um, it affected me. So I felt uh, I felt a need to use that word uh, to write on that subject, and also by writing, you know, we learn. Um, so um, the Easter Bunny is an exploration in my journey to discover um, as men take to become these type of people. The main story of uh, the Easter Bunny being a monologue, um, you know, there's only going to be one character on stage. But the story arc, um, just to uh, give a little bit of a um, tagline to it, story of a man who breaks into a woman's basement apartment. And while he's waiting for her to arrive, he ruminates on his life history, um, the things that brought him to this place. And um, the... Uh, he reflects on the uh, effect his life has, the actions he has on victims and predators, uh, people like himself, because he's actually both. I will be performing the Easter Bunny. That's an interesting thing, too, because the play, like I said, the little company I'm involved in, with uh, Marble's theater group, we have some professional actors. You know, it's not all just amateurs. It's, and, you know, there's guys who try, they're not making a real living on it, but they're trying to. And um, those guys did not want to be the Easter Bunny. Um, they did not want to take on that part. They, they liked it. They, they liked the different arcs of the character. Um, but it was not a, not a, it's not a credit they wanted on their resume. So um, I um, ended up taking on that role myself. And uh, that's been a fun challenge too, you know, taking courses, learning um, the acting, um, um, you know, what it takes to become an actor, not what it all takes. I know it takes a lot more than what I've learned, but um, it's, been, uh, some, it's been another learning experience for me. What I would like the audience to get out of uh, the Easter Bunny is first of all, it's a very serious subject and uh, it's not one, I take lightly. I do, nothing. There's no element of the play that I, I want to trivialize, um, because I know that there will be a lot of people who see the play who uh, would have been victims. And uh, it's actually something we touch on actually in the text of the play that um, graphic scenes of violence um, are not necessary. In the Easter Bunny, you won't see um, any. Uh, scenes of violence. I mean, there'll be the, the theme is violent, but there won't be any violent action on stage. There isn't any uh, nudity on stage. There isn't any um, uh, off color language in the stage. There's no profanity. Um, we try to make the that element of uh, the experience uh, kind of sterile for um, uh, people who actually have been victims of this crime. So what I want the people to get, would like to get the people out of it, is get some expo and you know, men especially. It's actually almost a play for men um, to get an idea of to reappraise their um, behaviors, to reappraise their, um, take another look at their um, their attitudes and um, and their own their own personal histories. Because a lot of time, I believe, you know, and just in discussion with my friends since I've written this. A lot of guys will have, take, have uh, taken me aside and said, you know, yeah, I remember a time. And it's something as time goes by, you rationalize some of your bad behavior. Um, but, you know, I don't like to generalize, but I think most men can identify with some incident in their history. 
where maybe they're maybe they made some uh, bad decisions. Why should people go to my play at the Hollywood French? Well, there's only going to be one play one night where you're going to be actually able to go, and that's going to be at the Stephanie Fury Theatre Studio Theatre on August 21st. Um, Matthew Quinn, through his uh, um, combined art form and uh, Theatre Asylum, is going to have an international night of international day of uh, theatre live stream. So the play will be live streamed at the Stephanie Fury Theatre on August 21st. My show will be at 4:40. Um, but there's going to be a collection of great shows there. Um, but why you should live stream it, um, I really believe this, that my the Easter Bunny will probably be the most, I think it's going to be one of the most powerful experiences you'll have at this year's Fringe. Um, as the director, when he came on board, he said, why I'm, why I'm agreed to do this play? He says, because it's not really material that I look for. Um, this isn't a play that where people after it will say, okay, where are we going for drinks or that? No, you're going you're gonna to want to talk about what you just saw. And uh, I think, you know, without seeing, I know there's going to be lots of great people. I know our, uh, Matthew's uh, group that he's put together, Theater, uh, Theater Asylum, is going to have a slew of, of great artists there. And I've actually had the chance to speak to some of them. Um, but I think the Easter Bunny, is going to resonate with you for a long time. What I am looking forward to seeing um, during my performance at the uh, Fringe Festival doing Easter Bunny, I'm interested to see how I, uh, my, my character arc um, um, evolves during the play. I think it's going to be a very, it's a very challenging role. Um, as the director says, you know, we've been working a lot on things and there's, you know, actually is, Funny as it sounds, there are going to be uh, there is elements of humor in the play, and I'm going to it's going to be interesting for me to see how I um, adapt and change with the uh, you know how rehearsal will be different from actual performance. You know what kind of uh, what kind of thing? I hope I'm surprised by some of the things that surface in my performance. Why I think it's important for everyone uh, to go to the Hollywood Fringe Festival is. Um, you're going to see a collection of some, probably some of the most talented uh, up-and-coming young uh, artists in whether it be sketch, improv, musical, comedy. Um, everything I've exposed myself to uh, so far, I you know I haven't been disappointed. And um, and the artists I've met so far through uh, Zoom calls like this, there's um, so many talented people in your community, uh, Southern California that. Uh, I can't see you not wanting to go. Um, you've, got a, you've got people who are, and they're doing, like I said, I'm talking about Matthew, they're doing it for all the right reasons, you know? They're, they love what they do. Um, I can't imagine a better uh, day out than, you know, stringing together two or three friend shows. And the community that you will become a part of uh, as an audience, and it is really a communal kind of thing. This is what I've experienced. Um, you're going to love every minute of it. You know, you won't, I can guarantee you won't be disappointed. Why events like the Hollywood Fringe uh, Festival are events that the community needs to support? As we said, this is a live, you know, this is all happening live. This is uh, involving, you know, from the streets. Um, the people, uh, the artists that you're going to be seeing are, are among you. They're with you. You know, they're not, they're not a group that's just out there, um, you know, in some vacuous place. I mean, they're, they're, they live with you. Um, every, effort, every effort I see is being made to diversify the festival, get as many different voices in there as possible, and um, anything that can, uh, that's even trying to achieve that um, deserves your support. Why local theaters are important and why they need local support is because, you know, they're the lifeblood of uh, this art form. Um, they reach out into different parts of your community that you might not be uh, aware of. Uh, immediately. I mean, it's in schools, um, community groups. Um, there's only so many entities that that could make, that can and do make uh, use of your local theaters. And, uh, you know, there, there are people struggling, you know, they're, they're not, I mean, nobody, nobody asked them to, you know, that's something they want to do, but um, they deserve a helping hand. And especially, you know, during the situation we're, we're in, 
Um, even just encouragement, you know, is, uh, is something that uh, these people, des- you know, deserve on some level. If there's anything else I would like to uh, uh, say about the play, I think um, the Easter Bunny, uh, as we've covered, is a, is a challenging play. It's going to be challenging for audiences because this is not going to be the type of character that you uh, really want to identify with or you want to uh, be in their corner. But these people do exist and they are human beings. And what the Easter Bunny, I think, will accomplish at the end of the day, you'll consider people like these in a slightly different light. And you'll see, you'll get a better understanding of where they come from um, and who they are among us. My name is Tom McAteer. I'm the writer of The Easter Bunny. If you enjoyed our conversation, please come out to see our play and a special feature on the 21st as part of Combined Art Forms um, International Day. Um, See you then.